Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, October 4th, and it is an absolutely gorgeous day here in, the, here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Perfect fall day, temperatures in the 60s, sunny skies, just wonderful. Uh, so nice that I believe I will be editing this video outside uh, as soon as I finish recording it. I would have actually done the video outside, but I just didn't feel like... I don't want to do any work today. <laughs> I just want to have, have a, a day off, and I don't want to relocate the uh, the tripods and things like that. So, yes, that is a mirror. Uh, it's my only mirror. I only have one Meerschaum pipe, and I rarely smoke it, but I thought, what the heck. It's Sunday. It's a beautiful day. Um... I've never really found anything particularly special about Meerschaum. Uh, I've owned other Meerschaums, it's the only one that I currently own. And, uh, yeah. Smoking Haunted Bookshop. Uh, this is a, this is a very inexpensive no-name block Meerschaum pipe. I don't think there's any name on it. I bought it used about ten years ago, maybe. And... I got it very cheap because the stem was not properly clocked and in fact this, when you screwed the stem in it was basically going up and down this way so you would have to smoke it with the bowl going sideways. Uh, I have not fixed that actually. What I've done, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, what I've done is I've actually just inserted a piece of um, business card actually. I made a sort of a washer out of business card and put it in there and then when I screwed the stem in that had enough, well first off it moved things out so that it was more accurately placed and then there's enough give in the card that you can tighten this up a little bit more and, and get it lined up. I gotta eventually fix it but it's one of these ones where the the tenon is part of the stem and it screws directly into the mirror. Um, I'll replace it with a um, one of the slip tenons uh, and I've got them I just I just need to take the time to do it. Yeah, I'd probably make a new stem for it while I'm at it because this is a plasticky acrylic, low quality acrylic stem. But it's a pipe. It smokes like a pipe. Not like a briar, but good enough. And haunted bookshop is yeah. I could probably smoke haunted bookshop in a hollow it out stick and be happy. So, I got a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, first, I just got a really quick uh, story because I want to show you something. I've been wanting to show you this for a while. So, if you follow the live streams, uh, two weeks ago on Friday night, I told the, um, the story of my pipe cleaner fire. <laughs> and if you if you missed that, I'll just give you a really quick recap because you'll need it to truly appreciate what I'm about to show you. So, I had a, f a few weeks back. I had uh, I, I've got this bad habit of I use this uh, metal container as an ashtray, and I sit here all day working, and I smoke a lot of pipes, and I just dump the, the ash into those. And occasionally, I'll use a pipe cleaner, and I have the bad habit of putting it in that ashtray. And uh, weeks back. I started a pipe cleaner fire. You know, I, all of a sudden there was all this smoke and everything, and I looked over and there were some flames. And so I put that out and everything, and I foolishly told my wife about it, and she of course freaked out because I'm going to burn the house down. So I swore I would never do it again. You know, never again would I put anything in it. I immediately started putting pipe cleaners back in there, and then the other day I had like this massive pipe cleaner. Well, well I shouldn't say it was a massive fire. It just started smoking and smoking. And when I picked up the thing, it was hot, like the bottom of it was hot. And there were, somehow it like started these, it, almost like coals and embers going deep inside the ash. Um, might have been the dottle, might have been the, the fibers off the pipe. I pulled a pipe cleaner out and it was glowing red. I mean, that's how hot this thing had gotten. So I sort of as a cautionary tale told that story and said, um, you know, don't put pipe cleaners in your ashtray. So, my friend Mark sent me this, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, 
Mark Mark does a nice job with these things. <clears throat> he's he's giving Eric the blue collar pipe smoker a run for his money, in my opinion, uh, with the, with the quality of this, and and uh, it, it it's just hilarious. So thank you, Mark. I really got a good laugh out of that. And I'm sure many of you guys will, especially if you saw that live stream, you, you will have appreciated that. So the other thing is, I um, yesterday. I feel silly saying this, but I harvested my tobacco crop, my two plants worth. Um, nothing, nothing is right. You know, it was it was the first attempt, and there were lots and lots of things that went wrong. But I took some pictures of, of the whole process from from the seedlings on, and I thought I'd just kind of do a little slideshow of that and tell you a bit about the the whole process. So I started off with with seeds, and the seeds were unbelievably tiny. Um, they were kindly given to me by uh, Tamper Tantrum and I thought well okay I'll plant them in little rows and this way I'll be able to grow them. And what you see here is actually a picture of the first seedling that sprouted. This is in a little container that probably has about five rows of, seedling, of, of seeds planted, uh, probably five seeds in a row and uh, this was the first one to sprout. Uh, it was immediately named Couch at the request of my friend Couch. And it did quite well along with about four other seedlings that came up in this container. Uh, however, they then, after about a week and a half, they just died. And I, you know, I did everything I could. I kept them warm. I, I tried to keep the conditions optimal and they just died. So I then went on and just the, the, those were very carefully planted. I had some uh, these coconut husk pods that I was using for beans and peppers and things, and that's what you see uh, planted here, except for this lower right-hand corner, where you'll actually see some more tobacco seedlings. And the way I planted those was I rehydrated the coconut pod, and I just sprinkled some seeds on the top of the the, so, the, the, the coconut husk, and walked away. And this actually grew really well, and I got a lot of uh, a lot of seedlings out of this. It was a little difficult separating them, but once they were, you know, robust enough, and I was able to uh, put them outside without having to worry about freezing, uh, a couple went in the ground. I don't have any real early pictures of them, but they did grow very quickly. And this is a, a picture that I took probably about two two and a half weeks after I first put the the established plants into the ground. Uh, it's, I'm shooting down onto the thing. Uh, it's probably about two foot high at this point. And, you know, it was, it, it, now it was growing fantastic. And you can see I actually had two of them. There's one in the back, uh, which never really did as well as the one in the front because it just uh, simply didn't get enough sun. However, I, I grew the two of them. I think I planted three. I knew that they would be big plants, and only these two made it uh, after transplantation. But from this point on, these were some of the most robust things I've ever grown. So getting them to this, po to this point is the challenge. But once they're here, they're going to grow under. They don't care for very much. I mean, they like to be watered. They like to have sun. Uh, but they're very hardy. So these grew quite quickly. Um, at this point, it's uh, maybe a month later, and you can see this has now eclipsed the pepper plant that it was uh, next to. Uh, it was about the same height. It was about the height of that fencing that you see down below when I took that previous picture. And at this point, it's probably about three foot tall and uh, continued to grow. And my goal here was not necessarily to get good tobacco. My goal was to get seeds. I, I just wanted it to flower so I'd have more seeds. I have more seeds. I don't need them desperately, but I that was kind of what I wanted to do this year. So, it did flower. And here you see this is a picture that was taken yesterday, just before I started taking the leaves off. And you can see the, the, the plant itself is now about I mean, it's in a bed that, that's maybe a foot high. I'm going to estimate this is about five and a half feet tall. Uh, you can see it's framed there by uh, dying tomato plants on the left and on the right, my makeshift uh, 
ladder trellis. <clears throat> and yeah, it, it really grew. And, and there's a an interesting curve at the base of this plant where it grew sideways for about a foot. So these, these plants are large. So what I did then was I, be, I just uh, started to, well, be, before I get into what I did, uh, this is a close-up of the flower, really beautiful flowers. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get some seeds. I don't know exactly at what point I should be uh, pulling these off for seeds, but I'm starting to experiment with that and doing a little bit of research on it. Uh, but again, very robust. And you can actually see it there on the upper uh, right, there's a second uh, flower for me. Now, what I should have done with this plant was I should have cut the top off before it formed the flower. And that would have allowed it to put all of its energy into the leaves. I would have gotten much thicker leaves. They would have been uh, probably higher nicotine content and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, for, uh, for a first attempt where I did want to get the, the, the seeds, I figure we'll, we'll take this through the process and just try it out and see what happens. So I know that I'm doing nothing ideal here. All right, so we cut the leaves off, and uh, yeah, in real tobacco harvesting, we wouldn't have cut the leaves off. We would have uh, let, just cut the stalk, but I only had two stalks, and one of them was quite small, so I, I figured I'll just cut the leaves off. And as I think Tamper Tantrum pointed out in one of his videos earlier this year, this method might be easier to dry simply because you don't have that stem, that, that large stalk that has to be dried out as well. So I cut the leaves off, I actually laid them out on the lawn, and I, I used the hose to, to rinse them off. There was some, uh, you know, maybe, maybe some, well, some dirt and some leaves uh, stuck to it from other plants, and there might have been a few aphids and things like that. So I tried to do a good job of hosing them off. And this was my invention for uh, hanging them up. This is a modified coat hanger. Uh, you can see on the right-hand side I, I cut it. I put a little loop on one part that will catch the, the straight edge the straight bottom and that far end, that far right end of the bottom piece I actually sharpened on a on a grinder so it's, it's quite sharp and uh, very easy to poke your finger with just for the record uh, and those are the clippers I use there uh, beneath it so what I then did was I, I just used that sharp edge that you see on the right and I used it to pierce the the stem of each leaf and uh, strung seven to eight leaves per hanger and the plan is to let them hang like that for a few days to, to wilt and there you can see the, the poor plant after I took most of its leaves away but I am, I'm leaving it up because I am still hoping to get some uh, some seeds out of that uh, the back plant I just cut the stalk down so it's it's there all by itself now and here you can see the, the final harvest uh, hanging up there. And that is leaves from both plants. And I, I like this hanger method. It provides enough, uh, you know, it's, it's a, you're able to space the leaves so that the air can move between them. Uh, I think they'll, they'll dry well like this. And the coat hanger is coated, so I'm not worried about the metal coming directly in contact with the, with the plant. So I'll leave these outside for two to three days just to wilt and then I will move them into my attic because I've got a, an unfinished attic that is very dry and very warm and I'm just gonna hang them in the center of that you know right from the eaves of the house and we'll give them a couple of weeks and you know I'll check on them frequently let them dry and I'll let you know how that all goes but that's where we are so Oh, and one last picture here. Um, this is my the final harvest from the garden. Uh, it was it was a great year for peppers. A very disappointing year for pretty much everything else. Hopefully not for tobacco, but we'll see how this this whole process turns out. So, hope you enjoyed that overview, there, guys. Um, I know I had a lot of questions about it, and I never really made a video. It's it's difficult to set up that kind of a video. You really need somebody else to be your cameraman. And, well, I'm sure Mrs. Canerod would be willing. I, I don't want her paying too much attention to the fact that I'm growing tobacco, to be honest. She knows she's supportive, but I just don't want to, you know. 
big win for me this year was she thought the flowers were pretty. So uh, I, I'm going to maybe plant more next year, not in that garden box, but maybe uh, or somewhere like around the edges of our fencing. Um, we'll see what happens. I still, I'll never plant more than like maybe five or six plants at the most. I just don't see the point of it. And I don't really think I have the room to to dry that much more. The reason I did this, and the reason you should do it, or at least think about doing it, is that I worry that there's going to come a day where I'm not going to be able to get it. And I have a large cellar. I've you know, accumulated quite a bit. But you know, if we get to the point where either selling tobacco is illegal or it's taxed to the point where it's just absolutely ridiculous. You know, if I if I had to deal with the taxes that you folks in Europe are dealing with, no way. I, I just simply would not pay $40 for a tin of tobacco. Um, so the choice would be to either grow my own or give up the, give up pipe smoking. And, you know, they're both options. But I'm not going to pay $40 for a tin of tobacco, especially not once I retire. So that's my 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 pur my purpose, my thoughts behind doing this. You know, it's it's just it's fun, and it's sort of a way of preparing for a future that I hope never happens. So that's about all I wanted to talk about today, guys. It's. Uh, not a very exciting Sunday, and I'm, I'm not going to do very much today. I, I need a day off, so I'm going to take one and maybe enjoy some of that beautiful 60-degree weather. So, I hope you all had a fantastic weekend, and I'm looking forward to a great week ahead. Uh, this Friday, this coming Friday, will be uh, Mel, the Garbage Man Piper, Mel Harris, will be my guest on the live stream. So please plan to, to tune in then, and I'll have an announcement <clears throat> on Wednesday or Thursday regarding a giveaway live stream that's going to happen next Saturday. So, look forward to that. I look forward to seeing you uh, at one of those times. And between now and then, you all take care. I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.